Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an action, sci-fi, and thriller film called The Call Up. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Carl Anderson is a very skilled gamer who lives alone in his apartment. He wakes up to an alarm, which reminds him of an important event, where he is recruited along with other elite gamers. Excitedly, he makes his way through the busy streets and enters a large building. Other players, Shelley, Marco, Andre, Edward, Zahid, and Taylor are waiting for the appointment to begin when Carl and Adam arrive. All of them observe the place, confused about the recruitment. Out of nowhere, a voice from the intercom welcomes them to beta testing. All of them must sign in on the tablets provided for the meeting to officially start. They are each assigned individual lockers where they should deposit their valuables and electronic devices. After the sign-in process, they are instructed to wear motion capture suits for them to join. As they change into uniforms, Shelley shares a brief conversation with Carl. She notices burn marks on him, but because the game is about to commence, they do not have a chance to talk about it. All eight of them enter a room where a machine scans them as they state their gamer names. After, they are given technologically advanced gaming suits, these armors provide the closest possible experience to modern warfare. Part of the suit is a helmet that secures itself in the neck, chin, and jaw, restraining them from removing it. Meanwhile, Saheed, the only Muslim player involved, ironically chose his gamer name thinking that it would be kept anonymous, and he refuses to wear the armor that labels him as a terrorist. He attempts to walk away, but the doors remain locked, despite his pleads of being let out. Shelley convinces him to participate in the game, saying they all understand that he meant for the name to be ironic. A bit comforted by her words, Sahi calms down and suits up. Once everyone is ready, the room where they are stationed is replaced by a computer simulation depicting a post-apocalyptic setting. Amazed by this, all of them get giddy in their new gear as well. Carl tries to observe the place, opens his visor, and sees the office as is, which means that everything is just projected, and closes his visor again. As they look outside, a war-torn city is in front of them. While the other players enjoy the high-tech features of the suit in the office, Zahid is still concerned about the whole recruitment, telling Carl that joining is a big mistake. In a separate conversation, Shelley notices that her tattoo has disappeared, thinking that it is far from impossible. Suddenly, a simulated sergeant appears, calling their attention and instructing them to fall in line. The sergeant acts aggressively toward them as if he is a real person. To check, Shelley tries to touch him and confirms that he is a simulation. The sergeant brings them to a room where they collect their weapons and test them out. Andre, who used to be a soldier, says that the weapon is very realistic. After the trials, the sergeant explains that it will cost them their armor when a bullet hits them once. He then demonstrates what will happen to Zahid, the sergeant shoots him, and expectedly, the armor disappears. After the demonstration, he reminds them that they are only given one armor during the game and distributes tubes they can use once they get hit. For the first round, the sergeant explains that a group of highly trained terrorists overruns the building, their job is to take them out and clear the path to the bottom of the building, starting at the 25th floor. He also adds that the gamer with the highest score wins. After the briefing, the voice counts to the last seconds before the call-up begins. Andre leads the team given his combat expertise, whereas Marco, Edward, and Adam follow him intently, while the rest follow. Out of nowhere, an enemy appears to shoot the gamers. Luckily, they can take cover as Andre shoots him down, making them advance to the next round. As they move down to the lower floor, the group encounters a roadblock, a live wire with high voltage. They safely pass through and collect more advanced weapons on the 24th floor. Only four are available, so Andre, Marco, Edward, and Adam collect it, and Andre teaches them how to use it properly. After Marco's first kill, more shootings commence, and they try to make their way to a doorway. Adam spots an enemy sitting in a room and attempts to shoot him multiple times, but his aim is weak, and all the bullets miss him. The enemy gets up to shoot Adam in return, but Andre saves him, losing his armor in the process. Taylor becomes increasingly terrified and reveals she just took her friend's place and is not actually a gamer. To comfort her, Shelley says that it is just a game and that she will protect her until the game ends. She aims at one of the enemies patrolling the room but hesitates to shoot. However, the enemy notices her and approaches their hiding place quietly. Fortunately, Carl is alerted, making him plant his first kill. Little does he know, another enemy is hiding for backup and shoots Carl twice, wounding him. Shelley comes to his rescue and is worried when Carl is wounded and says the suit's feedback caused him actual pain. Shelley removes her visor, seeing that Carl is unwounded, so she removes his visor as well. He is still in pain as he says that something is seriously wrong. Andre enters the room and injects the tube that was given to them earlier to relieve Carl from the pain. This seems effective as the wound disappears, but he remains nauseous. He repeatedly says that it is not a game, so the group gathers around to try and figure out what is going on. Carl lets them all know that the pain came from the suit and that they have to remove it as soon as possible. No matter how much they try, the suits are locked and unremovable. The group gets into an argument after Marco and Zahid accuse Andre of knowing about the experiment because of his exemplary skills and military background, so he walks out. While in a separate room, the enemies respawn and get back up. One of them approaches Andre, who apparently cannot see them. 
he hears a weapon behind him and lowers his visor, only to find an enemy that shoots him twice. Because he gave the tube to Carl, he has nothing to inject himself with, causing him extreme pain. The rest of them hear the gunshots and wear the visor again, when moments later, Edward gets shot, causing the others to run away. Taylor runs to the staircase but is blocked by the live wire, hopelessly scared, she screams to let her out of the game. While Andre drags himself out of the room, Adam throws a grenade at the enemies, which causes a loud explosion. The voice then announces that the second round has ended, giving Adam the highest score. Meanwhile, Andre's helmet lets out some alarm before it electrocutes him. The group finds his body and realizes that their helmets have been programmed to deliver a deadly shock on their character's death. Shelley tries to revive Andre, but it is too late. Desperate to have the suit off, Sahid asks Carl to remove and smash his helmet, which he cannot do. Before they can get the helmet off, the sergeant enters the room to beat Zahid and warns them all against further tampering. With no other choice, they have to play the game and go to the next level. They reach the 19th floor safely, where the sergeant awaits their arrival. He lets them know that a gas leak is present at the current level, limiting them to using only knives. Looking out the window, Taylor cries out of fear, but again, Shelley tells her to stay behind her, as she will get her out of the building in no time. Already on the 17th floor, the game continues while the group gets more experience in shooting. However, an enemy shoots at him, throwing him across the room and causing him much pain. As a nurse, Shelley's instinct is to rescue him, so Carl looks out for her but gets shot in the process. Seeing her two teammates injured, she has a dilemma on who to give the tube to, but luckily, Marco injects his on Carl, and Shelley's on Adam. They clear the level again, with Marco earning the highest points. Afterwards, Zahid overlooks the busy city in a desperate desire to be outside. He and Carl attempt to break a window that slightly cracks using a photocopy machine. Unfortunately, the sergeant appears before they complete the task, he beats Zahid recklessly and kicks him down the stairs, causing Zahid to break his leg. The sergeant reminds them that the following violation will result in death. As the next level is activated, Zahid realizes his teammates cannot carry him to the end of the game, so he stays behind as the others continue. Shelly is hesitant about leaving him behind, but she assures him that they will come back for him. The group is now on the 11th floor, where they find a weapon in a box. Edward gets a hold of it first, but Marco snatches it out of his hands, at this point, it is clear who has the authority to lead. Not long after, an enemy shoots Marco on the lower part of his body, which causes a commotion among them. They all take cover, and Taylor becomes separated from the group as she hides in a bathroom. With a knife being her only weapon, the situation grows out of her favor, and she ends up crying in a cubicle. Once Marco's strength is regenerated, Shelley realizes that Taylor is now out of sight, she calls out for her, but there is no response. An enemy enters the bathroom, where Taylor is heard whimpering. Forced to take defense to save herself, she kills an enemy on her own and becomes more confident. After that level, the group takes a break to save energy for the next one. After sharing about their lives and what they do, the team realizes they were picked not because they were elite gamers but because they have one common denominator, they are all loners. The chances of anyone looking for them when they are gone are low, saving the company from any legal matters. More determined to defeat the company, they advance to the next level. Back on the higher floor, an unseen enemy approaches Zahid as he lays on the floor and shoots him to death. On the ninth floor, the group sees the sergeant's silhouette beating someone up. He reveals a captive enemy and instructs the players to torture him for information on a bomb wired to the foundations of the building. If it explodes, the building will collapse, which will mean death for the team. Only the captive knows the code for disarming it, and they have to extract that information from him through any means necessary. Edward volunteers and proceeds to torture him further as they are in a race with time. After several jolts of electricity, the captive cannot take it any longer and gives a password Pushkin. Adam inputs the word Pushkin to the computer console when suddenly the lights shut down. Instead of being put to safety, an explosive device in the basement is initiated and starts a 30-minute countdown before it detonates. The captive laughs at them for being fooled and believing that the keyword would leave them to safety. Out of anger, Taylor shoots him dead, which is highly unexpected of her. Marco becomes agitated and aggressive toward Adam, whom he blames for putting them in a dangerous situation. When Shelley tries to stop him, she gets punched by him as well. Moments later, the sergeant calls out for them while he holds a door. They all run to an elevator to a lower floor, unsure what will welcome them. Marco grabs the door as everyone exits, but it suddenly closes when it is Adam's turn. His hatred toward him grows, making Adam fear for his life. They both descend further to the third floor while Shelley, Carl, Edward, and Taylor continue clearing an upper level. Now that the bomb is down to 24 minutes, they feel more urgency to get to the lower floor. Meanwhile, Marco and Adam are still on their own when they hear distant noises of enemies from another room. Marco uses Adam as bait for the enemies as they advance, leaving Adam to die when he is fatally shot. It causes Adam to be in a state of panic before being electrocuted by the helmet. Despite being saved, he breaks into tears out of guilt. On the upper floor, the group is still ambushed by enemies as they run out of bullets. While the enemies are busy shooting, Taylor decides to gather medical kits alone. She flees from the scene and goes to a room where a medical tube lies. As she turns back, Marco commands her to hand over the tube, but she refuses. He shoots her and says that she reminds him of his ex-wife, and walks out of the room. Carl calls out for her, and he sees Marco leave a room, 
he instantly suspects that Marco is behind her death after seeing Atlas written in Taylor's blood. Vengeful and filled with rage, Carl attacks Marco and gets in a brawl with him that damages his helmet and causes the sergeant to walk in and kill Marco. With only the three of them alive, Carl, Shelley, and Edward make their way to the basement floor as the voice announces that they are on the final level. They reload weapons before taking down four enemies in an ambush. The shootout lasts for minutes, which takes their time to disarm the bomb. Down to the last three minutes, a bipod-mounted machine gun shoots both Carl and Shelley, leaving them helpless. Carl sacrifices himself to save Shelley by using the last tube on her. She holds his hand as she looks at him with his dying breath. During that, Edward manages to kill the machine gunner using a rocket launcher and runs to the bomb, shutting it down just before it explodes. The two of them are the remaining survivors of the game, the sergeant walks in and congratulates both of them. Shelley watches Edward recite the victory speech and realizes he memorizes it by heart, meaning he must be the inside guy. She is still not relieved after being alive and surviving the horrors of the game. The graphics lift, making the office go back to normal again when security guards enter the room and hand Edward refreshments as if they serve him. The guards tranquilize Shelley and leave her unconscious in the basement. She then wakes up earlier than expected, only to find the others being body bagged, and Edward tells her that she's won the game before giving her a large bag full of money. Although fearful of her life, she still threatens to reveal Edward's involvement in the brutal murders, but he says nobody will believe her. As one guard approaches her again, she is able to inject the tranquilizer into him and grabs his pistol, killing the remaining guards in a shootout. The sounds of the bullets worry Edward, anxiously waiting for his guards to show up unharmed. However, Shelley emerges from the dark and points the gun directly at him as he appeals for mercy. Feeling betrayed, she is insistent that the game must never happen again, shoots him, and leaves peacefully without the money. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.